Clothing is something that no one can do without. We need it every day, in winter, spring, summer, and autumn. It protects us, performs aesthetic functions, demonstrates the social status, and creates an individual image of a person. Clothes we wear definitely influence the first impression others have about us. Historians referring to the data of archaeological excavations claim that clothing appeared at the earliest stages of human development. Primitive clothing was sewn mainly from animal skins. There is an assumption that the very first types of clothing were loincloth and raincoats. A little later they learned to cover their arms and legs and gradually these elements were combined together and full-fledged clothing came together, if one may say so. Until the 19th century people mostly sewed their own clothes. Ready-made outfits were almost impossible to purchase and only wealthy people could afford to order clothes from a tailor. At that time these were unique custom-made items. By the middle of the 19th century, a sewing machine began to be widely used and a new device for cutting fabric made it possible to cut 18 layers at once. This contributed to the development of clothing production on an industrial scale. For example, in the US in 1880, only less than half of all men's clothing was sewn in factories. However, already at the beginning of the 20th century, almost all men wore ready-made clothes. Even rich people who preferred ordering suits from tailors began to use the services of expensive shops. What clothes and how many are produced in Kazakhstan? Do people buy it in stores or prefer ordering custom-made outfits? Let's find out in this episode of our program. Clothes are distinguished by functional purpose, it can be underwear, corset products, outwear, hats, hosiery, gloves, handkerchief and scarf products or shoes, by gender characteristics, male, female or children, by climatic characteristics, summer, winter, demi-season or all-season clothing, by operational use, Household, home, work, everyday, ceremonial, sports, traditional, industrial, special, sanitary, technological, and uniform. Light industry enterprises are certainly present in all regions of Kazakhstan. The bulk of them, however, is based in southern regions. Almost 99.9% .9 of companies are engaged in the production of clothes, shoes and fittings. Unfortunately, there are just two plants that manufacture fabrics of various kinds in our country. One of them is located in Almaty, while the other in Shumkent. Whereby the former specializes in the production of polyester fabrics, whereas the latter focuses on the manufacturing of cotton and mixed fabrics. The process of making clothes at each sewing enterprise is carried out at three main sites, such as an experimental workshop, a preparatory cutting site and a sewing workshop. The staff of the experimental workshop prepare items for production. First, the test is performed, then experimental layouts for patterns are made. At the same time, the consumption rate of the fabric for the product is determined and the correctness of its use is monitored. The next site houses two shops, such as preparatory and cutting. First, the staff members accept and check the materials received for production, whereby they specify the length and width of the fabric, sort materials by width, fiber composition, color and technological properties. Fabrics are stored on racks, shelves and in elevators. In the cutting shop, fabrics are laid on special tables. In one stack there can be 10 to 15 layers if the fabric is thick and almost 100 layers if the fabrics used are thinner. On the upper fabric, the patterns of one or more products are outlined in chalk. Then the fabric is cut into pieces using moving cutting machines. The item details are cut out using a stationary drawing frame and after the quality check, the cut parts are stacked. 
The sewing workshop is equipped with special sewing machines, as well as equipment for wet heat treatment. Workshops usually specialize in making one or more types of clothing. At large enterprises, the site of final wet heat treatment, where finished garments are given a marketable appearance and the finishing site make up a separate workshop. From the finishing shop, the products arrive at the finished products warehouse. Our company is engaged in the production of sewing products, textiles, special clothing, uniforms, and we also produce home textiles. These are our main domains. In general, we have three factories in the cities of Jeskazgan, Astana and Karaganda. We have extensive production capacities as well as enough staff overall. Nearly 350 people work for us here in Astana. We are always busy with orders, we have regular customers who have been partnering with us for a long time. Our company's scope of works includes multiple activities, such as the development of designs. For each company, in compliance with certain norms, for instance, special clothing is made according to safety standards and specifics of the enterprise. That is, we can fully develop the design of items. We have our own designers. Everything is in place, including technical description and technical specification. We also have our own development and certification department. Basically, we can make everything. Furthermore, we provide a full cycle of services, including the selection of fabrics and raw materials right up to tailoring and delivery. According to the Kazakh Ministry of Industry and Infrastructure Development, within the period between January and March 2023, garment products worth 55.5 billion tenge were produced in the country, which is 37.8% more than in the same period of the year before. Moreover, there is also a 9% increase in the number of active enterprises in the industry. Within a year, 122 new enterprises were opened in Kazakhstan, according to the ministry. And this is despite the presence of issues in the industry. The main issue is that within 30 years we have lost absolutely all production facilities that were engaged in making raw materials, which could have been used in the production of finished products. We know that we had silk fabrics plant, a worsted wool plant and the Almaty cotton mill among landmark enterprises of our country, as well as a whole host of various plants that were heavily equipped in the Soviet times. These enterprises had massive production capacities and, as a matter of fact, their products were in high demand all over the former Soviet Union region. Due to the fact that the light industry has been overlooked for 30 years, as due attention has not been given to this industry, compared to those production facilities that are part of the oil and gas industry and the underground resources sector overall, sectors such as light industry were forgotten. Therefore, we need to revive the industry. In order to be competitive and offer a better price, we need to understand that we use imported raw materials. Within these 30 years, in fact, we have only preserved the tailoring practices. Tailoring is a service, whereas manufacturing of products impacts the country's industrial capacity. We also know that costs of raw materials take 50 to 70 percent of expenses of any light industry product, while the remaining costs are attributed to sewing and other accompanying expenses. Therefore, it is very important to revive the raw materials infrastructure and the industrial capacity which would allow sewing companies as well as footwear enterprises to manufacture finished products. Moreover, such types of manufacturing facilities require significant expenses. Therefore, in order to stimulate businesses to start manufacturing raw materials, 
They need to be offered manageable loans of no more than 2-3% interest rate. However, if the government allocated decent interest-free funding for the development of the raw materials production sector, that would be a significant and massive support for the development of raw materials manufacturing. Work on meeting these requirements is already underway. There is a decree by the Kazakh Minister of Industry and Infrastructure Development dated April 10, 2023, ordering allocation of financial resources for the light industry, offering a remuneration rate of 3% for those who implement investment projects. The mechanism is aimed at stimulating small and medium-sized businesses, and priority will be given to enterprises that are engaged in the production of textiles, clothing, as well as leather and related products. The maximum amount of funding is no more than 5 billion tenge per project. However, specific requirements are also provided. In particular, if funding is taken for the expansion of existing enterprises, then 30 additional jobs have to be created. If the loan is provided for the creation of a new enterprise, then at least 80 new jobs have to be available there. According to the latest data, to date, the pool of investment projects includes about 60 light industry enterprises with the capacity of 10,000 new jobs until 2025. The government can fully entrust all its public procurement deals to our domestic enterprises in order to potentially stimulate investment projects aimed at the construction of raw material companies or boosting the capacity of sewing enterprises. In other words, public procurement sector should always be at the forefront. Oftentimes, government officials, as well as other public servants, tell us that they are ready to provide any kind of support only if we operate within the commercial sector and stay away from public procurement. It is wrong to say so. The government is the entity that should lead by example, by showing the society that they procure and demand clothes made of locally produced raw materials. Therefore, the government should start with itself and set this trend. At the end of the day, all basic standard procurements, such as uniforms for law enforcement officers as well as other types of uniforms, are paid for with the taxpayers' money. We would certainly prefer the annual basic standard public procurement to be carried out benefiting all sectors of the economy. All light industry subsectors can boast of increased production volumes in 2023. Thus, the production of textiles has increased by 57% compared to last year. Output of clothing by 11.7%, whereas the volume of leather goods and related products grew by nearly 7.5%. Today, 22,000 people are employed in the domestic light industry, however, as market players themselves say, it is not enough. Our work schedule is a five-day working week with nine to six working hours. Overall, the only major difficulty is a shortage of professionals employed at the production site, such as seamstresses, technologists and others. We cooperate with colleges and universities as we try to recruit people. We have everything for this including a hostel for non-residents, transportation that delivers our staff members to their homes, and a canteen at the enterprise that provides hot meals. Basically, we have the capacity to work in two shifts, but there is not enough staff. We constantly come out with this issue. Of course, we would like to have more contracts offered by the government. For instance, long-term ones, so that we could plan production capacities in advance, provide people with work, build up the team, as well as the capacity. We have a dual training system in place as we work with colleges. The students learn the theory there and practice at our enterprise. Thus, we constantly cooperate. We employ people with no work experience as well. Our professionals also help with training if we have newcomers in our team. We keep everything under permanent control. We also have a lot of young people growing at our production site. They used to occupy a certain position and gradually grew and got promoted to higher managerial positions. We support this.
The leaders among Kazakhstan's regions in terms of the production of light industry items are the Turkestan region with a share of 28.5% and Shymkent city where 16% of output has been produced, followed by Almaty city and the Almaty region with the rates of 8 and 5.6% respectively. There is still room for growth and they are quite significant. What is needed is the government's support and the intention of large companies to purchase domestic products. Regarding our contracts, the working process is creative. We have our regular customers, with whom we have been working for more than one year. Mainly, we participate in tenders. Currently, we have some new long-term, two- to three-year-long deals, which allow us to plan our work. Since we have to purchase raw materials, we should plan everything in advance. Therefore, we would like to have more contracts in partnership with the government and interact with producers of raw materials with whom we would also be able to plan both their and our scope of work in advance. This would boost the development of the light industry in the country and we would all like the government to pay more attention to it so that new production facilities are created that would allow us to use more locally made raw materials, fittings and other things that are required in the production. It would also allow us to create jobs in Kazakhstan, improve employment, and we would probably have more people willing to work at such enterprises, as people would gladly join light industry enterprises with stable salaries. In the Soviet economy, the domestic light industry was the main supply of clothing and footwear. Imports were minimal, prices were stable and the industry itself was mostly seen as a solution to the employment issue. It was a widespread practice when light industry enterprises were created in the same cities where large heavy industry enterprises operated. Men went working at metallurgical plants or mines, while their wives joined hosiery factories. At present, large enterprises are the main customers of garment factories. This helps companies stay afloat as they have a guaranteed workload throughout the year. Moreover, multi-year contracts have been practiced since recently. This approach helps ensuring growth and development at garment enterprises. It is also convenient for customers to work with tried and tested manufacturers who have been well accustomed to their demands and are ready to offer new solutions for their long-term partners. As for our workload, one particular item may be made in the quantity of more than 10,000 pieces. It's an annual volume for one organization. But we work with more than one company. We are surely moving forward. We provide the designs of new models every year to everyone who requests. We can provide any models and any sketches. Likewise, we can also provide fabric composition and density, as well as all kinds of such details. Nowadays, large garment factories offer a wide variety of products. This allows reaching as many consumers as possible and therefore earn more, given that the competitors also do not stand still and are not ready to give up their positions. However, our output is barely competitive against products made in Kyrgyzstan, Turkey, not to mention China, as Kazakhstan's market is flooded with their goods. In addition to special clothing, we may produce a large scale of classic outfits. We have a fully equipped workshop here, as we also offer home textiles and knitwear. Moreover, we can make yurts, as well as their interior and exterior decorations. In addition, we can also design traditional clothing, branded and embroidered items with patterns and traditional ornaments. We employ more and more new technology. The output volumes are large and the factory is growing. We are moving forward. Our main competitors in garment production come from neighboring countries. These include products made in China, as well as goods coming from our counterparts from the Kyrgyz Republic. Turkish producers are also among them, as they produce footwear, knitwear, as well as fur products. Speaking of high-end premium quality apparel, we certainly compete with goods made by the Italian brands. Our producers successfully export their output. There are renowned companies engaged in the production of down coats and sportswear. Also, there are companies making children's footwear. Overall, our light industry has achieved certain milestones and yielded some results. However, they need to be multiplied. 
То есть, в принципе, результаты, да, они есть, но их надо масштабировать. Workwear, uniforms, personal protective equipment, summer and insulated field military kits, sweaters, knitted hats, mufflers, suits, raincoats, knitted underwear, and bedding. All these are produced in Kazakhstan and are of good quality at an affordable price. Let's pay attention to domestic manufacturers and trust them when choosing clothes. After all, this is our product.